What is up, Walking Dead friends and family? It is Brian Castrillo back with another review. This is for The Walking Dead Season 11, Part 2 of Art Acheron. And man, that was an amazing episode. I absolutely loved it. Um, if And excuse me if I'm a little tired. It's been a long couple of days. My son just turned five. Um, so that was kind of wild. It was fun, like, having his birthday party. I also had, for those of you that play fantasy football, I had... Um, my big fantasy football draft, but it's just been a, a lot of stuff going on. Um, but I just watched the episode and it was really good. I really loved it. There were so many callbacks to different episodes from the past um, and combined with Talking Dead. A lot of things is going on in my head and let's just talk about it. So there's two kind of simultaneous stories kind of going on. You got the Commonwealth where... Um, Eugene, Princess, um, King Ezekiel, and Yumiko are all getting kind of processed or reprocessed by the Commonwealth, and they're getting interviewed by these auditors. And then also, you have our other group, which is Negan, Maggie, Daryl, and Maggie's new group, and Alden. Um, of course, Dog's there, and they're kind of going through the subway tunnel. So I'm going to kind of talk about the subway tunnel first because if we go back to last episode where we had that cliffhanger where you got Maggie who she's getting ready to fall off the you know this the sub the sub that um the subway or the top of the train there and Negan looks down and he sees her and just kind of walks away well it kind of takes back after that and and they're kind of in the car and all of a sudden you hear like this boom 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 Boom, boom, boom. And Alden, he's like, that's SOS. And by the way, Callum McCaffin has, was amazing in this episode. I really, I think he really shined in this one. Um, but he noticed that it was SOS. So they opened it up, up kind of the release, the hat, the door, the hatch and on the bottom of the train. And out comes Maggie. She's pissed and she let everybody know what Negan did. She came and pistol whipped him, which was a, it was a badass moment. Um, and of course, Negan's like, yeah, so what? Because, you know, you were trying to kill me and it's I didn't, you know, try and kill you in cold blood, but I wasn't trying to save you either. Um, so after that little scuffle, you know, they're, they're going through the cart, um, the train, the train carts and there's, you know, there's walkers coming from one side and we kind of get through, get through, um, this one part where we see Gage and Gage is, you know, he's like begging for help. He's like, please let me out. Please let me out. <clears throat> and Alden is the one who wants to, you know, save him. But Ma <clears throat> Maggie's like, no, no, we can't because if we let him in, we're going to, you're going to let him on and we're all going to be in trouble. And I kind of understand where she's coming from. First of all, let's not forget Gage, what he did to Lydia. Um, you know, back to the previous season. But not only that, in this group, you know, he took their ammo, he took their supplies, and he just took off and kind of left them. So I I get where Maggie's coming from, but you know what? She could have helped them. Um, Alden was right in this, but she, she kind of left them to die, and pretty much everyone was kind of in, kind of in with that, and that was a rough moment because it it totally brought me back to when Glenn had to watch Noah just kind of get ripped apart and you see the same thing happen to Gage. It was really gruesome, but <clears throat> what an amazing epic death um, for Gage. And then also Daryl, you know, he's he's with Dog and he's going through a different part of the sub subway there and... He comes across this bag of goodies and he sees, you know, a hundred dollar bill in there. And one of the things that was interesting in there is that there's a there's kind of a note that's written on there from two kids. And and one of the things that, that they're saying to their dad in this note that they wrote on there is that, you know, we put the radio on every day at 10. And that brings me back all the way back to season one where Rick is telling Morgan um, every day, here's a radio, I'm going to try and call you at dawn. I mean, it's not the same as 10, but it just reminded me of that. And 
then there's also a photo in there where two kids and and they have the bunny. This is the same bunny that they showed back, you know, when they were stabbing the the walkers through the bags. And and you see that bunny there. So that I think there's something going on with the story, and we we may see something, you know, further on. Something is going to happen with this, and I, I don't think we're done with that yet. Um, <clears throat> then. Then here comes, you know, Daryl, and he's, you know, he's making it from the other side of the subway car, and and he's coming, and this was truly an epic scene. It kind of reminded me of Resident Evil when Leon's, you know, going through through the area in the in the game there. But Daryl, he's like totally epic scene. I absolutely loved it. Um, Daryl gets, you know, catches up with the group, and he takes a grenade that he got back from saving Roy where he was clearly beaten up and, uh, you know, from going topside, and that's where he lost his supplies as well. And he's all bloodied up, but he gave him this, you know, a gun and a grenade, and that's where, you know, Daryl got that gun, and he's, you know, shooting him, looking like Leon in Resident Evil. But another <clears throat> epic kill by Daryl, and he stuffs the, um, you know, the grenade into the, the walker's mouth and kicks him back, Close the door in a huge explosion, and Daryl's getting all these epic kills. It just not now not the same, but it reminded me of another epic kill that he did back um, when he's he's got the chains and he's throwing around. And he 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 kills the walkers like right right in half, right through the head. Just another epic kill by Daryl. Daryl is amazing. Um, and then at the end, you know, at the at the end of the episode where they they're they're coming up you know, topside, and all of a sudden, Roy gets an arrow right through the, you know, right through the head, kind of reminded, brought me back to Denise, where she got shot, which was just kind of a recreated death scene from, which should have went to Abraham, but he was taken out, then all of a sudden, they're getting fire from the Reapers from, you know, all over, and they have to duck behind cover, Cole gets caught in the leg, um, and they're clearly in trouble, which is going to go on to, you know, the next episode. And I, I, I cannot wait. And then the other story is you got the Commonwealth. And one of my favorite parts was, <laughs> Ab not, not Abraham. Well, actually, um, there's a part where Mercer, who is played by Michael James Shaw, which is absolutely perfect casting, and he's he's saying to um excuse me i can't talk tonight but um he he's talking to eugene and he's saying and he's like you can't lie for shit and, and i'm like you don't know who eugene is let me bring you back to you know back when we first met him where he basically was lying to rick to abraham to rosita pretending to be this big scientist and he had everybody fooled. And and one of the subtle things that you're watching during this interview is like right before he's like he's nervous, he's you know, he's shaking, you see his hand shaking, he's sweating, and then right when Mercer said that to him, you see his hand. It's it's very quick, but his hand all of a sudden just comes very steady. And he you could tell he know he's pissed off. And Eugene played it perfectly. Um, I knew he was lying, but Mercer fell for it, and this ultimately got them into the Commonwealth because Eugene would just, I mean, that's Eugene. Another thing that was funny during that um, interview was Eugene had said that he he's like, I'm a virgin, but I do recall watching from time to time, and of course that brought me back to when he's, you know, peeking on Rosita and Abraham, and I'm like, Man, so many callbacks in this episode and and Easter eggs and different things. Another thing, in watching Talking Dead, I believe he had mentioned that there was a a sign in the subway car of Dwayne Jones whiskey. Now, I went back and tried to to watch it over and over again, but the the bat, it, it was just very difficult to read a lot of the signs, but um, if that's true, I mean, you, you, I, I gotta, I gotta believe that Dwayne Jones is still out there. They're continually bringing this up, um, and of course, 
what I mentioned on a dollar bill every day at 10 just reminds me of every day at dawn Rick with the walk you know the radio and they're talking about the radio every day at 10 um, what if we get Dwayne Jones back now another now of course this is going back to another video that I had made where I believe certain characters are going to come back either in a you know a dream sequence or a flashback of some kind and it brings me to another character on talking death was emily kinney who played of course beth beth green and one of the things that lauren cohan said in this interview is that she fantasizes about beth being back with this group in this season and i i personally think that we are going to get a emily kinney beth green either flashback um, cause there's no way that she's alive. That's, that's just, there's no way. Um, but, but what if there's a flashback and this is kind of, um, and I mean, how cool would it be to see her again, um, on the episode? But, but yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing episode. I, I give this at least a nine, nine to 10. This was just perfect. The story was perfect. The pacing was perfect the tension was perfect um the the kills were perfect the callbacks absolutely loved it and and also i loved yumiko as you know we're getting to learn more about her being a lawyer and how she was grilling the auditors was was epic absolutely love this episode i can't wait for next episode and like like always you know i like to give a, a shout out and you know a friend of mine linda she um she makes amazing art and i'm going to include her um her links in here i want you to check check out her artwork she sells artwork um and one of one of my favorite ones of her is she did one of mercer and and you'll see in this picture that michael james shaw he you know he said this was fucking dope um, and he's right because it is it's such a badass photo you need to check her stuff out um if, if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, she is an, another epic artist out there. I love to, you know, promote my friends and get get their artwork out there. I want you to check her out. It's it's absolutely amazing. Um, and don't forget to go back and check out my my giveaway that I'm doing. Um, I mean, go, it's just a couple videos back. Go check it out. Um, I think you'll like it. It has to do with McFarlane, McFarlane Toys up um, Series 1 and a, you know, a Norman Reedus autographed one. Um, so yeah, you're gonna wanna check that out. Uh, thank you for listening to me. I apologize if I'm a little tired because it's been a long day, but um, absolutely love this episode. I wanna hear from you guys. What did you think of the episode? Um, what do you think's gonna happen next? If you if you have seen episode three, you know, no spoilers in the comments, please. Um, just kinda wanna talk on episode two. I, of course, next week I'll have my episode three review. Um, oh, and another thing, there was a scene where Princess was talking to one of the, the guards and she spoke in Spanish. Now, I am Latino, but I cannot, my, my last name is Castrillo, but my Spanish is horrible and I could not understand, you know, what Princess said. So if anybody that is fluent in both languages and could, you know, translate what Princess said in that one scene, I, I would absolutely love you, but, um, yeah, I want to thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and can't wait for next week. Love you guys.